Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperial Navy as we get into all the different types of battle cruisers found within the Imperial Navy. If you guys have any suggestions for other topics of Warhammer 40k or other uh, ship classes that you guys would like us to create a video for please comment down below and if you're new to the channel subscribe because we post Warhammer 40k content every single day so let's look at all the different classes of battle cruisers let's get into 40 facts on battle cruisers the Imperial Armageddon class battle cruiser was developed in an attempt to rapidly increase the number of battle cruisers available to the Imperial Navy the Armageddon class is a relatively recent innovation within the Imperial Navy. They are constructed from the hulks of ruined Lunar class cruisers, upgunned, upgraded, and recommissioned into battle anew. The Lunar class is ubiquitous amongst all Segmentum fleets and are frequently involved in shattering conflicts, so the opportunity to construct these battle cruisers arises often. Given their extensively redesigned power relays and enhanced weapon systems, they are more demanding in terms of manpower and resources than the Lunar class, and so are rarely constructed from scratch, but hard-pressed battle fleets are quick to utilize them where they are available. When converting a Lunar class cruiser into an Armageddon class battle cruiser, power relays are rerouted from the Starship's main plasma reactors to provide significantly increased range to its existing weapons batteries and lances. The additional long-range lance turrets are added to the reinforced dorsal spine. The result of this transformation is a warship with a powerful medium and long-range punch, though at the cost of adding over 3,000 more crewmen to man the new lances and maintain the short-lived relays that power them. Given their large crews and the fact that the Lunar class hulls were never really designed to carry such heavy weapons, Armageddons are surprisingly cramped and uncomfortable vessels for their size, making them poorly suited for long-term exploration. But few rogue traders can argue with the raw firepower they bring to bear if they are lucky enough to get their hands on such a powerful warship. The X-Cathedral was the first Armageddon-class battlecruiser to be created originally named the Orion as a Lunar class cruiser. The Orion was converted at the extensive St. Jones Dock in the Armageddon system, when the decision was made to upgrade rather than repair the venerable ship after it was badly damaged by chaos raids above the world of Pyran. The resulting battlecruiser, renamed the X-Cathedral, went on to distinguish itself in the Third War for Armageddon. The Imperial Armageddon class battlecruiser weighs approximately 30 megatons and can accommodate 98,500 people. The Imperial Overlord class battlecruiser was based by the Adeptus Mechanicus on the design of the Archon class heavy cruiser in an effort to create a cruiser sized warship with the long range punch and potent firepower of a true battleship. The design of the Lord class is generally considered a success in regards to it being a battlecruiser possessing the long-range capabilities and firepower of a battleship, despite many problems with its design. Difficulties in replicating the Archon class power transmission system led to the Overlord class possessing only an armored prow and standard cruiser torpedo tubes in place of the Archon's more powerful forward weapon batteries. Fortunately, this modification also freed up enough power to allow the installation of an upgraded dorsal lance turret and row upon row of broadside weapon batteries, providing a range comparable to the vessels of other long-range laser batteries. These changes resulted in the long-range firepower that the Overlord's designers had hoped for when they had outlined the tactical requirements for the new battlecruiser. Further difficulties in actually building the Overlord class meant that each one had to be painstakingly constructed at the Cypra Mundi orbital shipyard that served as the headquarters of the Imperial Navy in the Segmentum Obscurus, and as such, very few entered service within the Battlefleet Obscurus, with only seeing action during the Gothic War. A successful early illustration of how workable the battlecruiser concept can be the Overlord 
is as fine an example of a pure warship as can be found. Most rogue traders find the ship is poorly suited to anything other than combat, as its enormous weapon systems place a colossal strain upon the plasma drive. Some rogue traders strip out the extensive macro batteries, freeing up space for other components, but others regard this as a foolish and blinkered waste of some of the most elegant designed and lethally effective weapon systems in the galaxy. Manufactured in the vast orbital shipyards of Cypra Mundi, as well as other shipyards in lesser numbers, the Overlord is a difficult vessel to construct but faithful and fierce in its service to mankind. It does not waste space on massive attack craft hangars or the temperamental Nova Cannon. Instead, most designs use powerful long-range macro cannon batteries and last turrets backed by prow torpedo tubes. This simple, proven, and effective weaponry plays to the strength of the Imperial Navy tactics and Imperial technology. The design is an ancient but successful one and new examples of the class are still commissioned every decade or so. The Imperial Overlord Battlecruiser weighs approximately 31 megatons and is capable of housing 100,000 crew members. The Mars-class Battlecruiser is a powerful starship of the Imperial Navy and a very common and respected sight across Imperial space. It represents the apex of human engineering in space combat, and it is a truly multi-role vessel capable of engaging and defeating a large variety of threats to Imperial dominance in the Milky Way galaxy. The Mars class is a very common vessel in the Imperial Navy of the late 41st millennium, and hundreds of these starships can operate in just a handful of fleets in a single segmentum. The Mars class is regularly used as a flagship for small wings of starships on patrol, or as bulky lead vanguards of a full Imperial battle fleet. The Mars class fulfills many tactical criteria for the Imperial Navy that is normally impossible for Imperial military starships that are rarely designed with the flexibility required to be considered multi-role spacecraft. The Mars class excels at orbital bombardment, close ship-to-ship -ship warfare, and attack craft carrier roles. Only the Dictator class is as a multi-role starship since it can serve the carrier function but it lacks the ability to hit targets from a distance. The Mars class is well armed and equipped for its multi roles and it mounts a Nova cannon, a lance battery, fighter bomber launch base, and multiple other point defense weapon batteries. The Mars class name is a hollowed one, a name that echoes the great forge world of Mars because it was unique to the orbital shipyards of the red planet's ring of iron prior to the Gothic War. While many Imperial capitals reckon the class is undergunned for its size in comparison to a similar vessel, it is still sought after in many battle fleets, and the vessel still comprises a major part of the Imperial Navy's order of battle. Like we said before, the Mars class was first built in the orbital shipyards known as the Ring of Iron above the massive construction facility of Mars, and this class was also exclusive to the Martian shipyards. However, due to the combined criticisms of many Imperial captains about how effective the Mars class is in combat, eight centuries prior to the Gothic War, the production of the class was discontinued indefinitely, until that conflict proved the class enormous utility and it began to be mass-produced by the Adeptus Mechanicus Forge Worlds. The Mars class was originally envisioned as an all-rounded battlecruiser capable of dealing with virtually any combat scenario. Equipped with powerful weapon batteries, launch base, dorsal lances, and a Nova cannon, the Mars had a diverse weapon load. However, it failed at changing military philosophies within the Imperial Navy. The Martian shipyards discontinued production of the warship more than two millennia ago in the 39th millennium, and since then a few shipyards continue to build the battlecruiser only in limited numbers. However, there are many aspects of the vessel that have to be admired. The Mars class was designed to fill a gap in mankind's lack of multi-role cruisers. While adopting the traditional imperial bulky hull with the adamantium armored wedge-shaped prow with the wings located at about three quarters of the way down, the Mars class is a starship that is very recognizable. 
Its key features include the distinctive Nova Cannon, and a dorsal arrangement blistering with lances, but more distinctive than that are the launch bays positioned halfway down the ship, home to the four squadrons of Fury Fighters, or Starhawk Bombers depending on mission requirements. However, the Mars remains popular amongst many in the Imperium, particularly in the Kallic Sector. The warship is an extremely versatile combatant, able to handle a wide variety of combat situations. In addition, many captains appreciate the combination of Nova Cannon and Attack Craft Squadrons, as it allows them to pound their foe at range without closing within equal range of an opponent's guns. Several frontier battle fleets make extensive use of the Mars as a squadron command vessel, despite their scarcity. These starships are in many ways the perfect rogue trader vessel, offering withering firepower and extensive launch base for any operation. Their only drawback is the design of the Mars precludes many refits, as the hangar bays and the Nova Cannon mounts are almost impossible to remove without scrapping the entire vessel. The Mars-class battlecruiser holds approximately 107,000 crew members. And finally, the Chalice-class battlecruiser is a bold, experimental battlecruiser that is unique to the Imperial Navy's Battlefleet Calixis, and it was designed within the Calix sector. The Chalice-class was a bold but not entirely successful attempt to further develop the concept of a battlecruiser. The theory seemed sound. A fast heavy cruiser with light armor and powerful weapons that could outrun and outmaneuver anything it could not be immediately destroyed. During the bleak middle years of the Angevin Crusade, much was made by the imperial propagandists of the new locally manufactured supercruiser, planned to roll up the numerous Xenos and Heretic Empires arrayed against the Emperor's forces. Even though they only came into service as the crusade ended, Hopes for these vessels were immense. Early Chalice-class captains were laud as glamorous, swashbuckling adventurers in endless Vox relays and data plays. Sadly, the vessel failed to live up to expectation. Two of the original Chalice-class battlecruisers were destroyed during the engagement with unknown Xenos forces in the Hazareth Abyss in the year 123 of the 40th millennium, and others were lost to accidents or fleet engagements over the following millennia. Due to an active inquisitorial campaign to conceal these military setbacks, these starships remained admired amongst the ignorant general imperial public, who believed these vessels remained the iron core of the battle fleet. However, these sleek and beautiful warships, while fast and well armed, had a glass jaw and a disconcerting tendency to rupture plasma conduits under sustained assault. The Chalice-class battlecruisers weighed approximately 29 megatons and held approximately 98,200 people. And those were 40 facts on battlecruisers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever your battle group likes to hang out. Uh, like I said before, we're going to be doing more uh, videos on Imperial ships, and then we're going to do a giant roundup video explaining the differences between the ship types, uh, and then of course the classes are going to be videos like this one, where we go into each individual class for the in uh, Imperial ship type. So if you have any requests, comment down below. And uh, of course, if you did like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel or hit the, hit the little notification button right next to subscribe. That helps out the channel. And we do that uh, because with your support, we can continue to put out more Warhammer 40k content. If you don't want to wait for our content, click on the link below. That's going to take you to the wiki page where you can find all this amazing lore and way more. Um, so the link is down in the description. Thank you guys so much for participating and commenting down below. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out.